Hello and welcome to Springboard, your virtual university. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of the Virtual Academic Board chaired by Comfort. Springboard is your most inspirational show and the point of convergence for the greatest minds. Your virtual university is brought to you by the Springboard Roche Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group and proudly sponsored by MTN, MTN Pulse Just B, UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, Digibank, Let's Go, and Enterprise Group Enterprise, Your Advantage. We also are blessed to have support from the graphic business. And talking of which, you would like to look in Tuesday's edition of the graphic business for a full transcript of today's all important conversation. Today, we continue that discussion and settle on innovative business models that have emerged. What has changed and what does it say in terms of expanding our economy and changing the front of the way we do business? Let's find out from my guests tonight who have a clear understanding of these issues. It's my honor to welcome one of the finest emerging brands in our country, the Wear Ghana brand, and I have in the studio, Angoko Naikwadi. Angoko, good to see you. Thank you. Very good to see you. And then Rabna Jiman. Rabna, thanks for coming. Many thanks for having us. Today, I am in Wear Ghana, and I'm matching you boot for boot. You look What's great. You are signing great. So, so, so I, uh, what, what, when I, when I wear wig, what must I say? Must I say I'm, I'm in gigi or something? Yeah, gigi. you are wearing gigi, but okay. when you are when you are wearing wig, Anna, you say you are standing out. Yes. So what's the meaning of gigi? Well, it's. Hey, um, I don't want the show to end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, interesting story. Do you want to tell it? No, no, tell it. Okay, so the name of the person who made it popular is called Gideon, and his nieces used to call him Gigi because they couldn't mention Gideon, they were very young. And so because he did that for us, for the brand, for the, the, for the um, collection, we decided to name the collection after him. Wow, so you dedicated your collection to somebody who was a big support to exactly. the brand yeah. at your inception. Exactly. And the person's nickname was Gigi. Exactly. So you call it Gigi. Gigi. Yes. But that original story has been forgotten and Gigi has become symptomatic with being yes. hip. It's yes, so yes. very it's, giggy today. You have it's to. Such a good <laughs> All right, so we'll be joined along the line by Nana Are Damwa, who will bring us perspective about how some of the thoughts we are sharing are applicable to the world of selling books or, or delivering books uh, and a new model for doing that. But let me start with yours, Where Ghana. All right. For the benefit of, our, of our, our viewers and listeners, give us an idea about how you got into fashion. All right, so we, young, okay, great. So Ravna and I have been and I have been friends for years, way before we started business together. And when we were friends, we didn't even know we we're going to go into business or business together, talk less fashion. We were both working. We had a day job, and we were working. What, which industry were you? I was in tel telco. Since she was in the bank. Okay, that, that's but a nice around. Good <laughs> <laughs> right. So around the time that I was done with, te with telecommunication, with the, my job, that's around that same time, she was also playing around with fashion. Interestingly, around that time, I went to fashion school, and she was doing like a side gig where she was sewing for people. She would take, it to, she would take your order, take it to a tailor, and then they'll make it for you. So then we came together in 2013. Just summarizing, we came together in 2013, and we decided to, we launched the brand Wear Ghana, and then we decided to work together a few days afterwards. So That's how we started this, this business. What, what was the inspiration behind the Wear Ghana? The name. The, the name. What was the, the, the thought? The thought behind Wear Ghana. So it's exactly the way it sounds, mm -hmm. right? So it's important that we are self-sufficient. We mm -hmm. take care of us, our own. So if you are in a place, you eat that place's food. You wear your own clothes. Right? So we felt like, okay, there's too much of an influx of outside, external clothing and such. <coughs> so we decided to put that message out there and say, please, wear Ghana. Okay? And then we decided to late name the brand exactly what we were preaching. Interesting. Uh, Irabna, let me come to you and find out. She mentions banking and then telcos. Mm -hmm. Very, very exciting career prospects. Mm -hmm. Let me find out your background in terms of education, your original 
So I read Greek economics in tech. So in the financial institution, I was actually brought in to manage and help build the institution's agro portfolio. So that's how I got into um, banking. And then I transitioned to managing other types of businesses as well. So that's... <laughs> that's interesting. So it's yeah. a, a, a bit of agri-business background yes, or, yes, or yes. agri Yes. A Greek in school. Yes. So science students are Greek. Okay. Fashion. Science a Greek. <laughs> banking. No, fashion. Banking. Yeah, fashion. <laughs> Do you feel that where you are now is an amalgamation of, of all the experiences mm. and learnings that you've had on this journey? Absolutely. Do you find yourself using a bit of the Greek, a bit of the banking, a bit of the experiences that you've had at various levels of your life? I must be honest and say with the a Greek. Once I got into it, because I, you know how in Ghana it's like, oh, these are my grades, these are the courses I can apply for. Okay, so now I got a Greek, I'm going to read a Greek. But right when I got in, I was very easily acing the economic parts. So everything around the business of a Greek, I found interesting. I was scared of the chickens, I was scared of the cows, <laughs> I couldn't tell what Kontome uh, was. But the economic parts of it, so when it came time to specialize, I, it was a very easy decision to make to go and do agric economics. Um, so the agric part, I cannot say, but the business part of agric, absolutely. Um, and when it comes to the banking, oh, that has been extremely helpful because my role as relationships manager meant that I was working and then Later, I was a um, business advisor. So it meant that we were working very heavily with clients' financials because these were people who were coming for loans. So we needed to study the books, see if they could pay back loans. So that gave me an understanding into what's cash flows. What does a PNL look like? Why is it relevant? And that's, that's a huge thing to have when, when you're running your business. So you're benefiting from how Absolutely. to handle clients, yes, how to yes, understand yes. By financial statements, etc. Yes. Would you, uh, would you say that everyone who is going into business should have some kind of background in doing different things that they bring to the table to help them to, be, to have some breath? Absolutely. It's life. Mm -hmm. The more you've experienced in different spaces, mm -hmm. the more matured you will be yeah. mentally, emotionally, right? So you would notice that children who, while they were growing up, they got exposed into... Um, doing different things and going different places when they grow up and they have to go be together with other children who probably haven't had as much exposure their experiences are different mm -hmm. and they they seem to have a little more depth mm -hmm. right they, they they move and flow mm -hmm. easier so yes absolutely anyone who has um experiences doing a lot of things can bring it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, okay. it gets yeah. stronger and it, it helps to be yeah. a, a, a business person. Let's settle on your business model. Mm -hmm. I mean, fashion over the years has been associated with a certain kind of service mm -hmm. delivery or a certain kind of production orientation. Mm -hmm. So it's either the person sewing for their clients mm -hmm. and then as the numbers get bigger, the person gets apprentices mm -hmm. and then you come there, they measure you and they sew for you. And that has been the model that we, we grew up mm -hmm. seeing. In Ghana. In Ghana, Ghana, exactly. In this part of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2021 mm. and to where Ghana mm. and how different is your model from the traditional model for delivery mm. of fashion services? Mm. For one thing, the way we even launched, the way we started the brand is very different from what the traditional one is. We use social media. And social media is one of our biggest, about 90% mm. of how we sell right now. We launched our, the brand and our retail collection, the first retail collection, which is still running right now, which is the Gigi, on social media. We put our products on social media and then we deliver. So we don't have a brick and mortar. We, it's just recently, about two years ago, that we got a, sh a shop. In the past, we were selling online mm -hmm. on social media and then we deliver to our customers. Mm -hmm. So it was very different from what the, yeah. the traditional um, yeah. way of doing fashion was in yeah. the past. Right. And, 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 and I remember one of my pet peeves was, as soon as you tell anyone, well, I'm a fashion entrepreneur, the next question is you so. And it's like, do you think that Zara 
the, the, the owner of Zara is behind a sewing machine as we speak. So it's a very, very relevant question you ask. It's, for example, Angoko and I are not sewing in the business now. I can sew some. I'm no expert tailor. That's not what I'm doing in, in my role. Um, and you find that your, your, your clients don't care? At the, at the end of the day, no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Maybe. Yeah. No, yeah. No, let's, so let's, let's, other... let's have this conversation yeah. because yeah. for some people who consider themselves purists, yeah. they, they, they feel say like that, they must uh, sew. How can, how can you be a fashion designer yeah. and not sew? Right, 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 right. right. And yeah. you are saying that, listen, the, the contemporary clients you are dealing with do not care. You see, uh, in what, the beginning. Yeah, no, what, what do your clients want in terms of? What do they want when they, they deal with Wegan? What do they want? They are looking for the quality that they've promised. What quality? They, they want the quality, they want the service. Service. They want the reliability. Reliability. The convenience. convenience. They are also buying into the story of the brand. Okay. Because here's a brand that keeps saying we are more than a fashion brand. We are a brand that believes in Africa. We are trying to build Africa's most loved brand. We are giving out tangible evidence of African excellence. That's the story that our, our clients are buying into. And if our clients meet us and the first question they ask is, do you sew? It's just an icebreaker. Mm -hmm. They could ask, what shoe are you wearing? By the way, I'm wearing horseman shoes. <laughs> and and so, so really, that's what they are buying. They are buying into the brand. And that's one of the things that we think must happen quickly, not only in our industry, but in all the businesses that are, are, are growing now, that we go beyond that tabletop mentality that we often use to cage where we think the businesses that are born here can go to. Because we don't ask those questions of Zara, we don't ask those questions of Gucci, but we ask of, of the entrepreneurs that are here. The so you're, saying, you're saying people should focus on the service you deliver yes. and whether it delivers quality, yes. it delivers great customer service, it delivers convenience, yeah. and whether they are excited about the story of the yeah. brand and yeah. it delivers made in Ghana, the promise yes. of made in Ghana. Yes. Now, this is a very interesting dimension of the discussion because a friend of mine, I mean, Cody, Cody's built his business, Ordinary Designs, purely on social media. You mentioned social, social mm -hmm. media. And he got his first orders. And he, interestingly, he also wasn't sewing at the time. Mm. His mother was into fashion mm. and, and, and did our wedding clothes. Mm. She's an established authority. Mm. Now, he's thinking, what do I want to do with my life? Then he takes what his mother had done and then puts it out there online and finds out that people really want it. Mm. So he built his client base, and at the point where he built his client base, he wasn't the one producing, mm -hmm. but he was satisfying them mm. completely. Perfectly well. mm. And then after a while, when the demand grew beyond what the current model could supply, mm -hmm. he migrated and created his own supply mm -hmm. chain and delivered. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing is that at the end of the day, the client's expectations mm -hmm. once they are met they don't need to go back into the engine to find out mm -hmm. who joined the boat yeah. yeah no they're just curious like if right. i've said it's yeah. just an icebreaker right. so oh do you sew by the way they don't really want to wear clothes sewn by the person who said not necessarily yeah. if you deliver on your promise to them for example you say okay i'm going to make um quality clothing from authentic um, african brands for you and you show up and the product is exactly mm -hmm. that they, they are not con necessarily concerned that you were the one who sold mm -hmm. it. Let's, so move be, let's move beyond that to the, the graduate listening mm. as we speak. Mm. And hearing you say that, listen, the first point of call in setting up today's innovative business should not necessarily be the size of your mm -hmm. facility. And that's, that should be comforting because I recall oh, several years is. ago, somebody comes to me and saying, <laughs> I want to go into this industry, but mm -hmm. I don't have that huge yes. capital that I would need <laughs> to get a setup. Yeah. What opportunities does that present for the for the person starting out in their career? I will go. So, um, Rev, the the thing with size, right? It's not necessarily big. You yeah. don't have to have a huge factory or a lot of um, tailors to mm -hmm. be doing numbers. What you need to be doing is to be working smart. Mm -hmm. Because someone can have a company that has, what, 50 people working and producing less than someone who mm -hmm. has five people working because mm -hmm. they've done calculations. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, how do we work efficiently mm -hmm. with what we have? Mm 
-hmm. right? Whereas somebody else who has a 50 is looking at the brick and mortar and looking mm. at the number of um, people, the person is not doing the calculations. Mm. So it's very important to work smart mm. and understand how to make whatever you have give you the best in terms yeah. of quantity. If you are using what you have to get what you want, it's important to work smart even though it's important to work hard. Mm -hmm. That is not to say that when you're going into an industry, you shouldn't know anything at all about it. Yeah, you yeah. need to understand your Absolutely. industry. If you want to go into fashion, you need to know what it takes to make Absolutely. clothing. Right. You need to know what it, how long it will take to finish one I, 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 item. You need to have an idea. So like I said in my intro, I went to fashion school and got the skills. So I don't necessarily have to sit behind the machine, but I know how to talk to my tailor mm -hmm. and I know what to expect. Right. right. In your definition of the innovative fashion industry, sewing is just one subset of a much bigger world. Exactly. When I come back from this break, I'll be finding out from you along the line what you will do if you got an order that is a hundred times <laughs> your current capacity, how your Think Smart concept okay. will survive <laughs> that one. Let me bring on one of the resident faculty at the virtual university, Nana Aredamwa, the CEO of Book Nook. We've talked about fashion. Let's see whether the principles we are sharing are equally applicable to the world of books, which is a very integral part of our lives. Nana, hello and welcome to your virtual university. Hello, Albert. Nice to be back. I see you're also wearing, wearing Gigi on, uh, on Zoom. What, what they fail to tell you is that I'm, I'm one of the brand ambassadors. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. No, I, anytime I see you, I know you are typically wearing, wearing made in Ghana clothes. And I, yeah. I think that this brand is one of your, your favorites. Nana, how applicable are these principles? Um, just to give you a background, uh, Aoko and Rabna are suggesting that... Aoko and Rabna are suggesting that... Um, being able to participate in an industry is not necessarily about the core function in that industry being your main 40, but understanding the entire value chain and pitching where your strength is mm. and then letting others do the parts that they are also strong in. What, what would you say to that? No, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, from, from where I started my career, and, uh, and I will give an example. Uh, somebody like Yao Nsako is a chemical engineer, but... People know him for marketing, you know, so we, we were taught clearly that um, what you come to a job or any given uh, endeavor is, is your ability to think and your ability to learn. And I've, I have told people two things, that when you go to the university or when you go to any school, you don't go, you don't go to learn a particular subject, mm. you go to learn how to learn. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. And the second thing I've, I've, I always try to, to push is for us to do horizontal application of knowledge rather than vertical application. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? You don't do silo thinking. So mm -hmm. if you if you are a banker, mm -hmm. you should be able to use the skills that you have learned in banking to apply to agriculture, for instance. Mm -hmm. And if if you are an economist, you should be able to, to, to survive as a caterer because mm -hmm. you are using the, the principles that you have learned in your in your economic silo to apply horizontally to, to caterer. So now let's come to your, your industry, which is selling of books. And by the way, you, you, you mentioned you are exactly being a chemical engineer. You're also an engineer mm -hmm. selling books, aren't you? Yes, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, a chemical engineer selling books. And people wonder, how, <laughs> how does an engineer sell books? And then I, I remind them that actually the biggest bookseller in the world is an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the Bezos. It's an electrical engineer, you know, so... Um, and uh, maybe let me just go back to a, a question that you asked um, the, the, these uh, wonderful ladies about wh whether whatever they have learned in the past is applicable to what they do now. Sure. And I tell people that I bring everything that I've learned in the past to what I do now. You know, I have I've had experience in, in quality assurance. I've run an R and D um, uh, department across two countries where. They are putting in new product development from start to finish and, and putting in systems and, and uh, metadata and all of that for SAP. I've run production lines. I've run logistics distribution. So all of these, and then I'm an author and a writer and a publisher. So all of these come together in what I do with the book. So that's, that's really 
um, what what is important. You you are a sum total of all your experiences mm -hmm. in the past. So then, what you're saying clearly is that even the work you did with the multinational and the various industries you were exposed to are probably the drivers of the innovative <laughs> business model that you are bringing to bear on the industry that you are in. Absolutely, Albert. You know, I thought a book nook is not a bookstore. Mm -hmm. It is a supply chain company. Okay. So the model I have, I can slot in anything. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can slot in anything and it will apply. It's, it's, it's reproducible. Mm -hmm. You know, so... I'm, I'm, and I'm not selling books. I'm selling fast-moving consumer goods, which is what we did in Yeliba. So that's how I look at it. So when I look at when I look at books, I look at it as like Kiso, right. like Geisha, mm -hmm. you know, like like Dax, Dax, mm -hmm. like um, things that I had done with PZ and, and all of those. So mm -hmm. that's how I look at books. So I don't look at it, and, and perhaps that's why your uniqueness comes to play. And I tell people, you know, you can become unique. In, in, in how you bring your external non non in situ knowledge mm -hmm. to a new field. That's mm -hmm. how you can create a difference. True. Otherwise, you are bringing old ideas, old things that have been uh, you know um, used in the same field, and it, it doesn't bring any new exciting things. Now, now, for the benefit of those who don't know about Bookmook, and those who are wondering why are we talking about a new business model, let's educate our viewers and listeners a bit by taking the existing model that we have always known. So all through the years, if I wanted to buy a book, I will go to Challenge Bookshop mm -hmm. or EPP mm -hmm. or later Citrus and go to the bookshop, go to the stand, pick up the books I want, go to the, the till and then pay for them. This is the traditional model as it was uh, um, all through the years. I'm sure some of these brands may have made their own changes, but how mm. does the book nook model compare to the traditional model as was known through the years? Okay, so the, the key difference, and I'll, I'll just add to what you have said. So you must first go to traffic. You mm. must you know uh, where the bookstore is. And perhaps when you get to the bookstore, what, if you want, say, five books, you won't get it in one store. You might have to go to three uh, bookstores, one in Osu, one in uh, Lipon, and perhaps one in Kantamantu. And then when you get to that store, first of all, the physical bookstore is constrained by the shelf space that they have. So if they have a thousand um, um, spaces for on the shelves, that's the limit that they can they can um, stock. And then when you get there, you must have time to go through all the shelves to find out what you want, or perhaps call an assistant. So that's the existing model. Please add, and, add, and then, uh, add go and, there during working hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And and then, yeah. Albert, that, that is if you are in Accra, there are places where they don't have bookstores at, at all. You mm -hmm. know, somebody calls me from a place like Mampo, mm -hmm. asking me where is the nearest bookstore he can go. I say, how would I know? <laughs> but I tell you that your the, the nearest bookstore to everybody in anywhere in the world, right? Even the book book. Mm -hmm. So you might be sitting in Insuta, or you might be, you might be sitting in a, a century or so. Your nearest bookstore is really Bookmook. So what what has Bookmook done? First of all, it is at the at the it's on your fingertips. It's on your, on your phone. Um, we don't have um, again. You don't have to go through traffic. Um, you don't have to go to multiple stores to have the range of the books that you might get on Bookmook. It is a searchable uh, database. And we don't have limits as to what we can do because you, um, you you don't have a limit as to your floor space. So, like, as I speak today, we, we are sitting on about 5,000 titles and adding on every day. Okay. Um, again, even for authors and publishers, your ability to list on their site is very, very easy. It takes within 30 minutes, we send you terms and conditions, you are okay with it. We ask for some metadata and the pictures we list it. And within 30 minutes, people are able to, to order from anywhere uh, in, in, in the world. And the, again, the like I said... You, your description you, makes you are, it sound like you are describing heaven and hell. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll come back to how we even, we even make the existing facilities better. Because for many of these establishments, we tend to be an extension of the stocks that they have. 
So there are people who are operating fiscal books who will call us and say, you know, I have stock of this book uh, sitting for a while. Can you promote it for me? And some, in, in some cases, within a couple of days, uh, we, we've had this. I'll give you an example. This is my fiscal bookstore. So a guy, a, 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 a customer of mine calls me on, uh, he sent me a message on a Sunday morning, I remember very well last year, uh, a particular book from Nkrumah to Rawlings. Um, and he wanted it. He didn't even have the cover. So I put it down from, on Facebook. I said, I'm looking, and it wasn't for that it was out of print. So I put it up on Facebook. I said, I'm looking for the author of this book. Within 20 minutes, somebody sent me the, his number uh, from the Volta region. The author is in Akachi. I called him. He has a office. He says uh, his uh, publisher is in Accra. Uh, Weli Publishing, who I do. So I call Weli. Within a day, I have copies of the book on, mm -hmm. on, on Book Loop. So that's that's how we, we are able to do uh, things. And I, I, my last point was really the fact that in the world you are in the world, and we've had people ordering some out of very difficult books uh, to get on from, from all over the world. And, you know, you, you know the example of working with Rollins and what we did last year in August, for instance. So that's the difference that it brings. You are not constrained by space. You are not constrained by distance. Uh, you are not constrained by capacity. And the world has really become flat, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Order a book um, from from book look and I was I just did a graph here. I wish I could show it, but it's almost like a distance across the world. Because within three days, the books get to US. Within two days, they get to Europe. Within five days, they get to anywhere in Asia. So that's that's the model we are operating now. Let me so just so somebody doesn't misconstrue this as um, focused on book nook, mm -hmm. but focused on the model. Let me take book nook aside. Actually, you say that. Yes. The model is such that you can take books aside yeah. and put any fast-moving consumer mm -hmm. good in it. So to test the model, let me put book look aside and put any other company doing a similar thing in your stead. What yeah. does this model offer to customers? And secondly, how does this model compare with the traditional in terms of viability and scalability of the business? Can I give you four examples of, of um, uh, businesses using similar models that I have used myself? So the first one I'll mention is a company called Shaw Fresh. So uh, Baba um, sells fish, smoked fish, fresh. You know, <laughs> so my, my mom is uh, traveling. She needed to go with some fish. I said, no, I won't worry the old lady with this fish. I sent it to Barbara. Within three days, she had shipped it abroad. You buy tolo beef, you buy smoked fish, and she's able to deliver it within um, three, two to three days anywhere in the world. So this is smoked fish. Wow. Second, there's a, a company called Comfy Edding. They will it from Takradi. I needed sheets in my house. And this was really at the height of uh, the, the lockdowns. Clearly, I wasn't going to go out to any shop. I order, she sends the, the staff by EMS within two days. I have sheets in my house that my kids are very excited about. Uh, the third one, a friend of mine in Chicago um, had actually forgotten that it was getting to her, her parents' anniversary. Her parents are, are here in Ghana. And so she reaches out in the evening around 8 o'clock. Nana, can you help me? I link her up with um, somebody that uh, uh, knows well, um, Mike, Mike Sowa and, and, and the wife. They run a company called Bola Land Flowers. So I talked to the lady. The next day, the parents had their anniversary flowers delivered to them in a car. And then finally, there's a lady who sells the love, gives and fail. And when my team does something great and I want to spread them small, I call her, you must make your order before 10 o'clock. By noon, you have your jollof delivered to you at work. These are practical examples of people who are using similar models. So it's basically the other uh, receiving uh, platform, the other processing um, route and your payment uh, route. And most of these use electronic payments. And then they link up with a delivery uh, 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 route. And then that's it. So three, three stages and um, it's reproducible, sir. Will you write a book about this? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I, I publish books. I don't know whether I'll write about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think yeah, you should write I, about... <laughs> I think she write about the changing world of business from the Ghanaian context and then batch these stories because I'll be interested very much in, in, in partnering you in this venture. Yeah. No, I, Albert, it's a good idea. I think you just gave me an idea. What I can do would then would be an anthology. So I say commission uh, where Ghana to write about their experience. Mm. All these words I've mentioned to write about their experiences. It, it becomes a book of case studies. I, I, I think it's a good idea. And I'll tell you why I'm very interested, because in all that we do here at Springboard, we are looking at how to change the employment landscape mm -hmm. and empower many more people to live out their dreams. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the question I asked that you didn't get a chance to answer. What advantage does this business model have compared to the traditional mm. businesses? And that's for the benefit of young people leaving school, so they know that it's doable. Um, okay, so I'm just thinking on my feet here. First of all, you, you would clearly have... Uh, lower capacity, uh, capital to go into this uh, because because obviously you are not doing brick and mortar, you are not renting. You can actually have um, a one person mm -hmm. uh, doing this. And I'm, you know I'm excited about books. There's a book I read, um, The $100 Startup. It's mm -hmm. a fantastic book. So the guy tells you, and he actually mentioned something I'd never thought about, micro businesses you know we talk about big businesses mm -hmm. we talk about smes mm -hmm. actually there is one called micro businesses and mm -hmm. they are small usually operated by only one person mm -hmm. you know so it just can be a micro business and most of these are doing um for the uh, four figures in, in mm -hmm. dollar text you know so it's easy to go into it's smaller you can manage it from anywhere uh in in, in the world um you are not constrained also by by so many things, so, because especially when it's online and you do your stuff well, like book no, we don't sit on a lot of stuff. So we manage this that a lot, the number of the books that we, we sell, we can do it just in time. So if you, the third thing is that if you do your work well, your credibility is good. Actually, people can give you, say, a two, mm -hmm. a two to a seven day credit. Mm -hmm. Say, I, I want to be an online retailer for, for a, a wagon. I build my credibility so that I can pick the, the dresses, um, I can sell them with you a day or two. I can go and pay. I can pick more stock and all of that. So it ensures that your, your printing capital is also low and then your cash flow can be positive um, going forward as you build up incrementally. I'm going to come back to you because there's one more question that I would like you to answer and it's very key to this conversation and also very key to the viewers listening out there looking for opportunity because at the end of the day, if these two conversations with where Ghana with Book Nook can inspire somebody to also live out their dream, then we are getting there. And I love the four examples you give because it tells me about the applicability of the model mm -hmm. in different industries. Then I'll stay with us because we'll come back to you for some more insights. <laughs> so I'm quite I, 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 I heard you say yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Did you find that he was Extremely confirming so, yeah, what so. you said. Let me go. Do, do you think that he just put flesh to what you articulated? Yeah, absolutely. I think the question we've been answering is what problem are you solving? This is the question you are answering. And for example, so we make clothes. Are we really solving the problem of making clothes? We are solving the problem of providing clothes. But if we dig deeper, we might even find that it's not clothes that's the problem we are solving. For us, after peeling off the layers, we realize that they're in the business of providing solutions to people who want to either express or reconnect with their African identity. Today we do it through clothes. Tomorrow we can do it through the ring somewhere or shoes or whatever it is. That helps one to express or reconnect with their identity, right? So once you know that problem, you are not tied to the product. So for example, if it was the case of a chair, now, I'm not seeing myself as a carpenter and I must make a chair, but I provide comfort for people who need to rest. And it can be that I make the chair or that I buy from the person who makes the chair and delivers it in the most convenient. So then the possibilities become endless in the role that I must play to deliver the solution to my customer. Discussing the innovative new business models that have emerged through a combination of various drivers. The drivers over the past few years have been technological innovation 
end then customer need, but we all admit that they have been further accentuated by COVID-19 and the rapid change in our lifestyle over the past one year. And as we mark a year mm. since the first COVID case came in Ghana, mm. the reality oh, of boy. how much our lives have changed <laughs> is staring at us right in the face. In a world where you can be anything, who will you become? When you can go anywhere and never be alone, how far will you go? When your voice can reach every ear in the world, who will you inspire? When your money can travel faster and further, who will it reach? When you can tell a story in every language, which one will you tell? When you don't need permission to turn your dreams into reality, you go for it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, go. And when you think you've reached your limit, we'll keep you going. Let's go. There once was a man who had it all. He had skill. He had charisma. He was loved by all, but above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. Welcome back to Springboard, a virtual university brought to you by the Springboard Ratio Foundation in partnership with the Multimedia Group. And what can I say? A big thank you to MTN, MTN Pulse, Just Be, UMB Bank, UMB Speed Up, DigiBank, Let's Go, the Enterprise Group, Enterprise Your Advantage, and the Graphic Communications Group, driven in this instance by the graphic business. Let me ask my friends, Anko and Irabna, how key relationships have been in building your business model and especially in a in a very critical year like the year that we just have gone through especially last year when the the virus hit us unexpectedly we found out that um, a lot of us businesses had to come together mm -hmm. so we partnered ip for example um, interestingly enough collaboration is one of our values at we ghana it's important for us to keep relationships with businesses and individuals. I pay, we, are, we, are, we have partnered them and we are doing some business together with, which is mutually beneficial for both of us. There have been individuals that have supported our business from day one to this very day. So relationship, collaboration is one of the things that has brought us this and it's going to grow the business further as what we believe in. I always want to contextualize this for the benefit of those who are those who are starting out mm -hmm. there, especially while they are still in school. Yeah. I mean, you talk about relationships, they, who, they don't greet anyone, they come mm -hmm. to lectures and go back. <laughs> Do you find that you are increasingly using your old school mm -hmm. network and your church network mm -hmm. and your other networks 
to advance your business, Ravna? Yeah, I mean, especially in the beginning, the relationships expand. So if it was senior high school that we're starting the business in, then it's the friends that we have while you are there and your family, then you move into university. And if you are doing things well, you are not losing, so you are adding. And now you have a big bucket full of relationships you can count on. Um, and often we find that we have a random call from a company we've never been in touch with, and we are wondering, how did this come about? And we get the backstory, and it's someone who sometimes has never even bought from us directly, but knows the brand, who has put in a word for us, and hence we have the contract. So at the end of the day, relationships are everything. There's, there's, a, there's a scriptural explanation for that. Mm. If you look at Joseph and David, mm -hmm. both of them were hustlers mm -hmm. who rose to prominence mm -hmm. in a day. Right. That, that's the, the, mm. the bottom line of the story. Right. Joseph was in prison, mm -hmm. and the next day he was prime minister, mm. or that evening he was prime minister. Right. David was hustling the desert, and the next time he was in the king's palace. King. And in both instances, individuals who had dealt with them, who had had right. a good experience, mm -hmm recommended them and That's said, try true. these guys, they are good. Yeah. And in both instances, it led to a massive promotion. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's one of the enablers of doing good business. Right, Rev, interestingly enough, what I found out is that the relation, the direct relationships aren't necessarily the ones mm -hmm. that bring the business, in our case, mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, when we started this business, I would, for example, go to my friends and say, oh, by the way, I have these mm. clothes and what's not and what's not. And majority of them, wouldn't respond. Mm. But indirectly, somebody who saw you standing maybe in front of a shop who felt like, oh, wait a minute, I like your energy. Mm. Or be relationship, they, maybe they saw you and they... Connected. Connected. Two years later or three months later, they will come and then buy from you. So the direct, it's relationship, absolutely, but it's not necessarily the direct relationships. Mm. It's sometimes referrals. Mm -hmm. It's also sometimes... Collaboration, like I said, with mm. businesses who know that what you are doing, they can identify mm. with you, right? So that's, but that's it. Don't be, people don't be too upset when your close-knit people right. are not responding. responding. Yeah, it's true. okay, eventually they'll come. Yeah. But at the end of the day, do, just do your best and make sure that everybody can identify with you eventually. Mm. Let's end on the note of technology and scalability. Mm. How can technology be an enabler for scaling up big time in a business like where Ghana? Let me... Let me come to you, Rabna, for instance, and look at as you, if you got an order for a, a hundred mm -hmm. times what you normally can deliver. Mm -hmm. Is your model scalable? Mm -hmm. And what will be the role of technology? So in the past, once we launched the Gigi collection, one of the things we struggled with was demand was always here, supply was here because of capital. Yeah, yeah. Already, we can't tell. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, like, was, was, had always outstri outstripped uh, supply, mm. and it was a real struggle. So, where were we going to find all of the money to invest in all the machines and the people that we needed to be able to really, really fulfill all the demand that we had? At the end of the day, the answer is in outsourcing. And Nana Red Damwa spoke about this in having other players focus on the parts that they can play. So there are manufacturers, there are, there are factories which are set up to do manufacturing. Our strength as a brand is in the design, is in the marketing process. And so we focus on that. If we have an order that's even a million times bigger than what our in-house capacity is, we have a supply chain that will fix this problem. For us as a brand, what is important is that the production is done here in Ghana, or once Ghana cannot take the, 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 the pressure in Africa. That's the only thing that we need to, to know for the products that we, we make. But we are collaborating with factories to make sure that we can fulfill every other size. And technology absolutely plays a big role in this because then you have to be able to remotely monitor things like quality. But once the lockdown happened, we've never made face masks. We had never made face masks and we needed to be able to make face masks. And our tailors were home because we, we had shut down our factory a week before lockdown. We weren't comfortable with people having to go in and out. We had to teach our tailors how to make masks remotely. We had to make videos, put it on WhatsApp, have video calls. So this is how technology helps us to monitor um, quality of production that's happening in a place that's outside of our own in-house space. 
it's so different, but it's also so exciting. Mm-hmm. Right. Let me go back to the Nara Dangwa and find out about some of the easily available technologies that people take for granted mm-hmm. and let's model a scenario. So, Nana, you there? I'm here. Let me give you three, three things I'm, I'm monitoring that people have access to but don't take, sometimes don't take too seriously, but which can probably significantly reduce the cost of business setup and also increase the reach of a business. Mm. So let me arm you with three tools. One, Instagram, or let's say social media, but mm. led by Instagram. Tool number two, let me arm you with a delivery mechanism Commonly with um, evidence by, let's say, dispatch riders. And then number three, let me arm you with uh, a locational, location finding technology like maybe Google mm. Maps or Ghana yeah. Post. Ghana Post. Mm. Armed with these three technologies, how can they enable a business to scale up beyond mm. the, their wildest dreams? Um. So. I, I wish uh, uh, Maximus was, was here to help me with the data, but clearly with the social media, especially Instagram and uh, say Facebook put together, you are reaching billions. Mm-hmm. And um, this this also gives you the ability to even segment and to, and to target the people uh, that, that you want. Um, delivery, and um, I'm, I'm, so Albert, I, I will add two segments to, to the delivery that you mentioned. So the dispatch within within the country for sure. Um, another another um, tool that people really really underplay is Ghana Post. Eh? Ghana Post is so so widely um, distributed across Ghana. It, in every village or close to every village, there is a post office. You know, so that gives you the ability to reach not within the, only within the capital, but even to the uh, to the hinterlands. And I'll just add another one that I've seen recently that I have started using, Uber. Mm-hmm. Uber for pickups and deli- deliveries. Once you can do your calculations well, they are very good in terms of, especially when a customer needs the staff immediately and you, it's not really concerned about, about delivery costs. Or sometimes you want to you know, um, have a good customer service because you are looking into the future and you can absorb some of the delivery costs. So uh, delivery gives us very, very powerful tools. And then the ability to pinpoint where the delivery is to be done with, with all these um, uh, Google Maps and then Ghana Post GPS, which is also very, very, very powerful. So, you know, the, the world has become flat, Albert. The world has become flat and you can sit anywhere in the world and do business to anywhere in the world with these three tools that you have mentioned. Would you say that armed with these tools, a person can scale up their business significantly without in- investing additional capital? You know, I like what Agoka said about collaboration. And um, I always tell people that we need to grow the pie together. If you can collaborate, you can, you can uh, exponentially expand both your input and your output. You know, in finance, uh, uh, Rabna will tell you about the uh, uh, principle of using somebody's money. But in supply chain, and she mentioned it, there is also the ability to use somebody's facility. Yeah. You know, and if you know how to creatively go around this, you can you can really expand and scale up easily, almost overnight. Because in every factory, I can tell you, having been in in the factory, there is always idle capacity. There Mm. is always idle capacity that you can can, can use. And COVID really showed showed us uh, what we can do once we move out of our segmented thinking and and, and think uh, openly. Now, Damo, at least if I've not learned anything from you, um, I've moved away from OPM, which is other post money, to OPF. Which is other post facilities <laughs> or other post factories. <laughs> Let me say a big thank you to you for joining us today mm-hmm. on your virtual university and for the thoughts that you've shared. My pleasure. Blessings. So let's bring this home with our closing thoughts and listening to all that you've said about the possibilities that are available to somebody who can use simple technologies and, mm-hmm. and, and, and do something. Let's contextualize it for the benefit of that person who's either in or has finished. University mm-hmm. at KNUST, mm-hmm. Legon, Central University, Pentecost, Methodist. Yeah. 
and it's asking assessing it's asking themselves is there opportunity out there mm -hmm. is there hope out there and very often they'll see i don't know what to do mm -hmm. do you think that this represents hope for graduates about entrepreneurship about possibility and about opportunity Rebna? absolutely you don't need assets for example in the space that you want to play in physical assets we, we already have some assets. Let's talk about our mobile phones. Now, this has become one of the most important assets that we have. It's giving us access to WhatsApp, to Instagram, to Facebook. These are huge marketplaces. And as young people, the advantage we have is we understand these platforms. We have collaborated with big companies and come to realize that it's interesting how companies have money and yet are still struggling to understand this social media thing what is it but we take it for granted because we wake up every morning and it's social media that we are playing with that's your market that's access to markets we go to the university and they teach us access that's access to market we have access to markets we don't need to own the assets so if it's the book industry for example when i read the mark describes a situation where there's an author author in the volta region there's someone on social media looking for the book that this person in the volta region has and you are there could be the aggregator that brings these two people together you talk about aggregator over and over and over what three questions must you ask number one to be able to enter into any space mm -hmm. and do uh, what must you ask yourself what are people looking for in that one, space so who are, are the customers two, two. two who, are, who are the suppliers and how do they want to receive oh, oh slow down you, now you're going <laughs> So let's start. What are people looking for? What are people looking for? Who are the who are the suppliers? The customers who, first. Yes. Yeah, so the customers. And then it's always the customer. Three, who are the suppliers? Mm. Who are the suppliers? How do they want to receive? And for how did how how, how can we get them married? How? And how can we receive our cash? Oh, you will go to. Your and we don't. Okay. <laughs> so we don't even have to meet physically any of these. I can be an aggregator. So it's, it's bridge and cash. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can be an aggregator and I never touch the product. I just need a trusted supplier. I need a customer willing to pay. And I need a mechanism mm. to meet, to bring these people together. And that's it. You, you simplify it so beautifully. Mm. And I like the fact that you didn't forget mm. the cash. Never. Just kind of. very important. Yeah, I'm not really Amen. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me come to Yamagot to, to, so, to, to close us. And, and let me take it on a very different angle. When I was growing up, a career meant, you should say, lawyer, pharmacist, mm -hmm. doctor. If a pharmacist was not, was not even call it, call it considered one mm -hmm. of the big ones, yeah. it had to be doctor, lawyer, um, engineer, architect, engineer, and, yeah. a, and a few selected ones. It's very hard for me to see people who are very well educated doing stuff that some time ago you would mm -hmm. not even say this is a career. Mm -hmm. right. But even beyond fashion, now it's very humbling to see graduates selling watches, mm -hmm. selling food, selling, um, doing horticultural services, mm. doing delivery mm -hmm. services. What would you say to that person who still hasn't made that mental transition and says, listen, this is below my level? What mm. would you say to them? Mm. Albert, so at the end of the day, it's no about the Wachi per se. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the Wachi alone, you might, and you shouldn't, you might be put off and say, oh, it's just selling Wachi. It's business. Mm -hmm. It could very easily be selling shoes or selling Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. It's business. And business, all the business principles apply. Mm -hmm. So there you need a brainiac mm -hmm. to run a successful business. Do you want to be that brainiac who takes Wachi to the next level? Do you really? I say you probably want to be thinking around that, that place. Instead of focusing on the YG. For Instead of focus, because you can sell whatever you want. If your passion is Wache, think about it in terms of business. How do I make Wache like Mercedes Benz? Mm. That's an attractive way of thinking about it. Another thing I want to talk about is we have to become thinkers. It's very good to work hard. But it's very important that we work smart. And that is why... Smart, mm -hmm. work smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And it's important that we work very, very smartly. And that's why people like us who have uh, uh, an education, who have a, a tertiary education, are thriving in the spaces where in the past people would say, oh, it's, it's for the people mm -hmm. who don't have an education. 
Right? So it's because we are putting our minds to it and we are doing it differently. The Ravna mentioned Zara. Zara is not the, wom the woman next uh, on the wayside, right? She, Zara is a huge business, yeah. right? And he, there's a way of doing it. You need to think like, and want to build a huge... Five years from now, one word to describe where Ghana, where Ghana will be. We are building a love brand. Africa's a, 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 we're building a love brand right here in Africa. A, one word. One word. Black excellence. One That's word. That's what? Is, is, is it hyphenated or <laughs> Yeah. Hashtag. Hashtag. Hashtag black excellence. Yeah, Hashtag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me give you one word and I'll please on that one. One word. We're Ghana. Everywhere. 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 Yeah. Let me give you one word, and the word will be Gigi. <laughs> Let me say a big thank you to you, Iran Ben Amokho, for coming onto the show to discuss, to discuss where Ghana, but even more importantly, the, the innovative business models that have become a part of our lives. And I am very confident that as we model examples like yours and Nadamois and, and show other examples that uh, are there but people don't know, it would inspire many more people to live out their dreams. So my prayer and our prayer for you here at Springboard is that when you come back next year for an annual review, mm -hmm. there will be so much more to see yes. and so much more to showcase. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, so, Thank you much. so much. So that's another edition of Springboard at Virtual University, looking at the changing world of work. The question to you is, what can you do? And to use the model that Iravna shared, what are people looking for? <laughs> Who are the customers? Who are the suppliers? How can I bridge them? And how can I find the cash? If you forget <laughs> everything, please go with that one. My name is Albert Okran, thanking you on behalf of Team Springboard led by Comfort and on behalf of the multimedia group, MTN, UMB Bank and the Enterprise Group, powered also by the Graphic Business and My Joy Online. I want to say God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. <laughs>